everyone and welcome back to Big Oggy's World. So today is a Sunday, not that that's it, you know, relevant in any way, but it is. And I am going to do something a little bit different. It's a recipe that we saw quite a long time ago, but um, we just, we didn't get around to it to be quite honest. And then we went to the supermarket and the key ingredient was on special offer. When it's on special offer, you can't not do it, can you? So today we are going to be roasting a whole duck. Now, ducks, if they're not on offer, they're about nine pounds each per duck. They're all round about the same size. I guess it's the way the supermarkets work. They buy them all the same size. Um, this was on offer at seven pounds, absolute bargain. So we got it. So this recipe, I believe it's a Tom Kerridge recipe, although it's not in his recent book, it was in a magazine. Uh, I can't remember which magazine it was, but it's basically a roast duck with plums. And you, you do sort of quite often get duck recipes with fruit, so it's not unusual, but there are some spices and stuff with it. It's a very simple recipe. It's just sort of a spiced duck cooked with lots of nice plums and um, it should be delicious. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take one star anise, these funny little things, and two tablespoons of coriander seeds. And we're going to, first of all, we're gonna temper them. So we're gonna toast them in a little pan. And I'm gonna to have to turn my back on for this, but John's gonna come the other side so you can see what I'm doing. And we just put this onto a heat and basically as it warms up you will start smelling the spices toasting and the warmer they get the more they release their oils and the fragrance and once they're nicely toasted we're going to put them into a pestle and mortar and bash them basically um if you don't have a pestle and mortar you can do this if you've got a spice grinder or even i think a coffee grinder you can use a coffee grinder to grind spices we don't have any of that fancy stuff. We've just got an old fashioned pestle and mortar, which works absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna do this bit first and then we'll come back. They do look a bit toasty, don't they? Well, I guess that's the plan, love. So the idea is you're just gonna warm these through, literally toast them in a frying pan, and um, they start smelling. You can, you can actually see them going a bit darker. Yep, you can. Keep them moving, because you don't want to burn them. And you can already smell the star anise is already, it's quite a, what would you it's call definitely it? definitely an aromatic. An, an acidy, sort of licorice yeah, yeah. type what it's for. smell. Um, so the idea is that once that's done, when you can start smelling it quite strongly, then, that, then they're done. So you're not trying to burn them, we're just kind of, well, lightly toast them really smelly. Is that what it says on the tin? Right, so. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see, but they're now a nice toasty brown colour. Yep. So I'm going to take the them off. Definitely smelling. Yeah. And they're going to go straight into the pestle and mortar. Like that. And into that, we're going to add two teaspoons of sea salt. And the salt, as well as helping to um, flavour, will also help to grind the spices down. You need to give them a bit of a bash to start off with. I'm moving back for protection there, it's getting a bit lethal. Bits flying everywhere. Oh, the smell. That's, that's what it's for, there's your aromatic. Very well done, love. I wasn't that I did most of that grinding. That's you did, great. you're very good at it. I have used it. There's a really strong kind of licorice weed. Well, definitely aniseed ball flavour now. Yeah. And smell coming out everywhere. Now, once you've ground it and it looks like this, like a very fine powder, you are done. So it goes into a bowl. And then you mix the spice mix, there you go, you can see it better now on white, with the muscovado sugar. Now it didn't say whether it should be light or dark muscovado, but I didn't have enough dark, so we've gone for white, light rather. So it's four tablespoons? Yeah, 
Uh, don't worry about the measurements, John, I'll put them all down the bottom for you so you don't need to worry. But then you need to mix your spice into your sugar. But it's inherently a sweet and spicy rub now, which kind of goes on the duck and um, partly in the sauce that you make. Absolutely. Okay, now on to our duck. So, I'm going to put the duck onto a plate and get rid of that. When you buy a duck, a whole duck, they always come with giblets. Remember to remove them before you roast. Nobody wants that inside their roast. Yeah. You won't hear me very well because I don't have a microphone on, but I've known plenty of people who've done a braised turkey or whatever with giblets left in them. Exactly. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a sharp knife and we're going to lightly score the skin. Now, this is important. Don't go right the way through the skin and into the meat. You don't want to do that. You just need to lightly score the skin and that is going to allow the fat out. It's going to make your skin nice and crispy, but it's not going to damage your meat. You sort of need to do it in kind of a crisscross if you can. I guess the idea is the fat will render out. Exactly. Like that. Okay. Now, next thing is we're going to put our olive oil into our casserole dish. Now this casserole dish needs to be one that can go onto a hob, which is why we are having to use this hob because my casserole dishes are not induction ones, so they won't go on my little hobby thing. So I'm going to put some olive oil in that and then we're going to brown our duck all over with a pair of tongs. We're going to turn it over so we get a nice bit of colour on the duck. So I'll crack on and do that and John will come closer with the little camera so you can see. Whilst my pan is warming up, I am going to put my oven on. You need to preheat your oven to 140 degrees if you have a fan oven, 160 if you don't and gas mark 4. Whilst um, we're waiting for that to warm up, did we discuss the um, amount of time per duck, per yes. kilo? Yeah, ducks. So, the recipe tells you one um, length of time, but the recipe also is talking about a duck which is over two kilos. Now, as I said, at the supermarket, they're all approximately the same size, and that is around about 1.8 kilos. Yeah, you'll be lucky to get one up to two. Yeah, I, th I think I picked the biggest one that was on the shelf, and it was 1.8 kilos. So the actual timings to roast duck is 40 p, 40, p 40 minutes per kilo, plus 10 minutes over. So we are going to roast our duck for about an hour and 10, hour and 20 minutes. We're going to roast it for an hour and 10 and then we're going to heat the, the, turn the heat right up as far as it will go to just crisp up the skin at the very end. But obviously just check with your thermometer, etc. Exactly. You get to that point. And obviously you're going to have to work out your own timings for your own duck. Okay. Right, I think we can start browning. I'm glad you've got a pinny on. I don't have any protection right now. You see my, my phone is going to just get covered in duck fat. That is the problem with duck. It is a messy bird cook. Well, the other good thing though, if you actually render out a bit of the duck fat, it's useful for potatoes and stuff all the time. But never, never waste anything. You know, olive oil and duck fat is a perfect thing. Just put them in a little jar, stick it in the fridge. It's a bit of duck fat for uh, your roast potatoes. Okay, so you can still hear it sizzling. I've browned the top. I've not gone too far because as I said, at the end you're gonna turn the heat in the oven right up to crisp the skin up. And once you've browned your duck, you need to drain all of the fat from out of your casserole. You don't want it sitting in a load of um, oil or fat. So I've drained that off. Now the next thing you're gonna do then is you're gonna take your spice mix and you're going to season all over your duck. Now obviously, duck is now hot, so 
I certainly am not going to be getting my hands in there and rubbing it in. Now again, if your duck is smaller like mine, you're going to find you've got an awful lot of spice mix, but you don't need to use it all. You just use what you think for your size of a duck. Then the next thing you do is you put your plums. These are those great big um, purple plums, which are the only ones we can get here out of season. You can't get sort of Victorias and things like that until the autumn. So you put your plums all around your duck. Get them in there. Then you're going to add a couple of bay leaves. Plenty of aromatics in here. And finally, you're going to add your red wine vinegar to 300 ml of chicken stock and pour that in and around. Now that is going to go into the oven now for an hour and 10 minutes and then I'm going to check it to see how we're doing with cooking. And that's it for the now, for the time being, it's time to clear up this mess and go make a cup of tea and sit down for an hour. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so that's in and that really is all there is to do with that bit. Um, as I said, at the very end, you're just going to turn the oven way up as high as it will go just for the last 10 minutes to crisp up the skin. Now, you can serve your duck as it is when it comes out of the oven. They recommend that you drain off or take off the extra fat that comes from the duck from around your plums. And you take a nice big spoonful of the plums, which will be broken down and use that as kind of like a sauce to go with your duck obviously it's up to you. There have been people actually uh, commented on this recipe and said that they have actually made an, a proper plum sauce with the plums that they've cooked with the duck and that's obviously an option if that's what you'd like to do also. We are going to go basic, quite simple, it's going to be our Sunday roast so we're going to have it with roast potatoes, broccoli and cabbage and some carrots so we won't be jazzing it up too much. So I hope you've liked it, um, it's a great recipe for a duck if you can get a duck on offer, obviously they're quite expensive otherwise. Lovely family recipe, it should appeal to all of the family, there's nothing weird or wonderful in it to upset your kids. Um, if you do like it, give us a thumbs up, if you try it do let us know because we're always interested to find out what it is that you're doing. If you've subscribed, thank you very much, if you haven't, please do so. If you know somebody that might be interested and don't know about us, let them know and see if they'll subscribe as well because that'll be really helpful. So we will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.